Well, hello and welcome back to the studio. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at this, the SRAM Professional Bleed Kit. So SRAM offers two different bleed kits. The first is their standard, and then they have this, which is the professional bleed kit. And there are some differences, obviously, that I'll go through here in today's video. And we're actually going to demonstrate this uh, particular kit by doing a rear ble brake bleed service on my transition scout. It's also worth noting that at least through the retailer that I purchased from here in Canada, perhaps it's available elsewhere, each the standard and the professional bleed kit is available in two different versions with and without the DOT 5.1 fluid. I've chosen to go with the SRAM variety that I purchased at the same time as the kit. So let's just get into it. So this kit, like the standard kit, has very similar componentry, but this is a step above. So first and foremost, we're going to see the actual syringes. Now in the standard kit, they're a syringe like you would find in any sort of like medical setting. They have a standard, you know, plastic uh, pull tab at the end for the, for the, um, the plunger. Uh, this one here has a sort of bi-directional. So you hook your fingers on the back. The groove here allows you to squeeze down. And then similarly, if you are pulling up, um, then you can also pull behind. So depending how you're uh, choosing to operate this, it is bi-directional. You can also see that there's a really nice metal shaft, uh, which is not going to deflect as much perhaps as the plastic shaft on a standard syringe. And keeping with that metal theme, we can see here at the bottom, there are metal threads inset, inmolded into the actual syringe. Interestingly enough though, uh, when you, we'll get to this a bit later, but when you reference SRAM's bleed instructions, they reference one quarter and three quarters, whereas the actual uh, increments listed on the syringe is in milliliters. Just something I noticed that I thought was a bit funny. We're gonna set this down here and explore the uh, remaining contents of the kit. So here we have some bleed blocks and a couple of little Allen wrenches. Now the, the standard kit consists of four different bleed blocks. This one, uh, according to the pictures that I saw, had six, but we actually have two, four, six, seven styles in here with one repeating. So go team, have some uh, extra blocks, but uh, suffice it to say there's more uh, different combinations of brakes that can be bled with this. I didn't personally buy it for the additional variety of bleed blocks because I largely suspect that uh, these are older style. My principal reason for purchasing it was the higher quality materials that we can see and having been very familiar with a standard medical grade syringe, I liked, uh, I liked this handle style. This is something I was familiar with. In fact, it, it reminds me of something that you'd see in dentistry. Maybe that's where this comes from. Taking a look here in the rest of the uh, the container, we just have some sort of manuals and things in the bottom. But uh, if we go ahead and open this up, we have our second syringe. Something unique again to the professional kit is that there are more of these O-rings and uh, um, kind of repair style items. But I'll go ahead and actually pull these out here. Comparing the professional kit versus the standard kit, the professional kit, again, we see metal here at this end that would thread into the metal on the syringe. On the standard kit, these are plastic. Uh, similarly, at this end right here, this is metal. On the standard kit, this silver bit is plastic. However, credit where credit is due, on the standard kit, the business end is still metal. So um, both the standard and the plastic kit include uh, the multi different styles of both the threaded bleeding edge style and the non threaded bleeding edge style. Credit or credit is due, SRAM does for the most part an excellent job at preparing instruction manuals uh, or rather service manuals for all their componentry. This manual compared to others that I've read was not my favorite because it was multilinguistic as opposed to being just English or just French or whatever your preferred language is. So I think there was something like six or eight languages that this was written in and the way that it was laid out required a lot of jumping around. It was a bit of fine, uh, you know, where's Waldo in terms of like which graphic related to which style and what step. 
So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to overlay all the information that from this service manual that is just dealing with a non-threaded uh, bleeding edge style break, which is for the code RSC ultimates that I have. If you have a slightly different style break, then I would encourage you to reference the SRAM service manual for the bleeding instructions. However, I'm going to try to tailor it because I think a lot of people have code breaks on their bike, at least probably the type of people that would be watching this channel. So step one, let's just get right into it. Step one is prepare the syringes. To assemble a syringe for a brake lever, thread the bleed clamp assembly with the threaded bleed fitting onto one of the syringe plungers. So this is the threaded end here, and we're going to go ahead and thread that onto one of the syringe plungers. There we go, use that knurling there. That is a really nice snug fitting. I like that, that feels good. So on to the next step. Fill the syringe for the brake lever with dot four or 5.1 brake fluid until it is about three quarters full. So we're gonna do that now. What I'm gonna do is just set some of this uh, packaging aside, some things that we won't be using right now in this video. Let's go ahead, open this up. As I do this, I'll mention, it's always really important to keep this sealed and stored in a safe space that it's not going to leak out. Um, to the best of my understanding, dot 5.1, dot four, any of the dot brake fluids are corrosive. It's also worth mentioning that uh, dot brake fluids really like to absorb atmospheric moisture. So we don't want to leave this out for a prolonged period of time. Nevertheless, we want this three quarters of the way full. So we'll just dip that in here. Now, in the next step, it says hold the syringe upright and cover the tip with a shop towel. Depress the plunger just enough to remove any air bubbles the syringe should still be close to three quarters full. Sorry about that, it's in English. So what we're doing is we're going to try to push out the air, but SRAM does have a really good tech video for this and they kind of have a bit of a pro tip. So any fluid that's still going to remain in this line, you want to draw down into the syringe first before you then start pressing out because otherwise you're just wasting a bunch of uh, dot break fluid and risk getting it you know, elsewhere. Now, it's also worth mentioning that later, um, once we, uh, once we actually get going here, then the proper bleed instruction, you can see that, uh, maybe you can see there's a small little air bubble in there that is going to be normal. And through proper technique, this won't make any difference whatsoever. So next step is close the clamp on the syringe brake lever. Go ahead and close that up. Ooh, that's quite firm. Yeah, it's much firmer than I thought it was going to be. So the next step, assemble a syringe for the brake caliper, thread the bleeding edge tool assembly onto one of the syringe plungers. As mentioned, we are going to be using the non-threaded bleeding edge tool. For me, we are going to thread that onto this syringe plunger. This is again is going to be for our caliper. So next step, fill the syringe for the brake caliper with a small amount of the dot fluid. So in the videos that I saw, we're looking for about 25% full. It continues, hold the syringe upright, cover the tip with the shop towel and depress the plunger enough, just enough to remove any air bubbles. So basically exactly what we did with the other plunger. So I'm gonna go ahead and recap our brake fluid here. Set that off to the side. It's more that little pro tip from the, uh, the SRAM YouTube channel. And then we're gonna clamp that off. Whew. All right, so now we have our syringes prepared. So next step, we are going to prepare the caliper. We're gonna do that by removing the wheel from the bicycle according to the, wheels, uh, the wheel manufacturer's instructions. We're also going to go ahead and remove the brake pads and we're going to insert the bleed block. Now we know from referencing the SRAM service manual that we want the bleed block titled large. That's gonna be for the code RSCs. 
You can see here it's got the little hole in the center and that's where the pin's gonna go through. So let's take a look over to the bike and get on that. All right, let's go ahead and remove this rear wheel. I'm gonna be using my favorite at home tool kit, which is the uh, Topeak Torque Stick Pro. We can just use the uh, little included ratchet which comes with it. And I believe this is a five mil in the rear. Ah, almost forgot. This is sort of the downside or challenges, I should say, to uh, trying to film yourself. I uh, would otherwise be on the other side of the bike, but such is life. Let's get this out of the way back here. All right, so now next up we have the little Allen key on the back of the caliper. That is included in the instructions, but I think it's a 2.5. Yes, it is. Also, there is that little clip. I think they call it an English clip. It's basically like a C clip or a little mini cotter pin. Um, I'm gonna set that down right here so that I don't, uh, don't lose it or forget where it goes. And actually, now that that's off, I'm just gonna go ahead and build up the uh, thumb driver here. Gosh, I love this kit. So nice. Pull that out. Actually, you know what? I'll set it over here with uh, everything else. Bring our shop towel over in close, get that ready. Now we insert the large bleed block. Goes in, kind of working those pistons back in their chambers. That's down. I probably don't even need to do this, but I think in the instruction manual, it does say to, uh, or suggest reinserting rather, this, uh, this pin, there we are. Just kind of rock that bleed block back and forth a bit. Cool. All right, so the next step, step number seven says, use a four millimeter hex wrench to loosen the bleed port valve one quarter turn, then gently retighten the bleed port. That's gonna be step eight. So this is a four millimeter, two, three, four. And this actually harks back onto what is essentially step zero. So I'll admit, I apologize, I did skip by that. So first and foremost, you want to know if you have a threaded or a non-threaded bleeding edge caliper. So the easiest way I know to tell is if you have a look at the caliper body itself, there's going to be a little rubber uh, grommet that keeps this four millimeter protected. And that is going to be for a non-threaded bleeding edge style caliper. If however, there's, I think it's a set screw, no, it's a uh, Torx, then you have the threaded style. It says crack one quarter turn. There we go. And we're going to retighten, just snug it back up one quarter turn there. And I think the reason why we do that quite honestly is because the actual bleeding edge tool is going to open it once we insert it, but it, they just, I assume, don't want you to try to be cracking a really stuck four millimeter with the tool itself because theoretically it could break off and that would most likely be a nightmare trying to get out. So that's, uh, I assume, why they have that uh, right now in the instructions. Step nine, install the syringe with the bleeding edge tool attachment into the bleed port. Push it into the bleed port until you hear and feel it click in place. There we go. Hear and felt it click into place. Next step. Rotate the bleeding edge tool attachment counterclockwise one complete rotation to open the system. Do not exceed two complete rotations. Let's see, quarter, half, three quarter, one. Set that down there. Next step, for levers with contact point adjustment, as we have here on the Code RSCs, rotate the contact point adjustment dial the opposite direction of the arrow until it stops. So basically it wants us to move the contact point all the way out. Unfortunately, on mine, the contact point adjust simply does not want to turn. So looks like we have a, a potential future video of a um, lever body disassembly and repair. 
However, I'm gonna proceed forward uh, just for the sake of completing the demonstration for the brake bleed. Now, one step that is also required here is to rotate the lever reach adjust knob approximately 75 to 80 millimeters from the center line of the handlebar. So that is from this outboard tip to the center line of that handlebar, and that's about what we have here. On to the next. Use a T10 Torx to remove the bleed screw from the lever. Fluid will drip out the bleed port. Clean any dot fluid that drips out from the bleed port with water and soap and a towel. So on these code RSCs, you can see this is the T10 here on the top of the lever body assembly. So we're gonna have our blue shop towel ready. And just for preparation, it says thread the three quarter full syringe into the lever bleed port. There's that T10 out. Set that behind us. Catch any drips. And go ahead. Come on now. There we go. And thread in the three quarter syringe. Oh, that's neat. I was turning the entire syringe body, but actually you don't need to do that. The uh, silver bit here on the end of the tool just goes ahead and rotates in on its own. So that's really neat to see. So next step is open the clamp on the syringe at the lever. Open the clamp. That's just this. Oh, it's much easier. Oh, I can see. So I suspect that it'll be easier in subsequent um, usage because the, now the plastic tubing is already a bit pre-pinched. Oh, that's interesting. So I just jumped back in the instruction manual here and on steps nine and 10, it's actually depicted with the plastic clamp down here, the hose clamp on the caliper end of things actually already open. And if I scroll all the way back to steps six and seven, it actually doesn't even say to close it in the first place. So that's interesting. Nevertheless, I will, Open that down here. We will go back to where we were, which was, hold the syringe vertically, gently push the plunger down, stopping before air enters the hose tube. Fluid will fill the syringe at the brake caliper. So we're gonna displace from the top all the way down to the bottom. And if I go to the next step, step three here, hold the syringe at the caliper vertically while slowly pulling the syringe plunger at the lever upward to draw fluid from the syringe at the caliper. So we're going to kind of do like a push pull thing essentially. So we can see the fluid transferring. There we go. Now we're gonna take a pause here and just observe the color of the fluid. So if there was any discoloration or something like that, this would be the time that we would actually just completely disassemble, refill and repeat that step, thus flushing the, the whole system with new fluid. However, the fluid looks good. There's no debris particles, anything like that. So then we will proceed on to that step three, which was essentially push it right back up. So we're essentially cycling the fluid there. There we go. Now we can see lots of bubbles coming up. So rotate the bleeding edge tool attachment clockwise until it stops to close the system. That is down here. So two, three, four. That snugs that up. So now the system is closed down here just because no reason not to. We will also go ahead and lock that so that there's no air that's going to come up in that line. Remove the syringe with the bleeding edge tool attachment from the bleed port by pulling the bleeding edge tool straight from the caliper. Oh, super easy. Love it. Not even a drop. How good is that? Use the four millimeter hex wrench to tighten the bleed port to 1.6 newton meters or 14 inch pounds. Install the bleed plug. That's that little rubber grommet. There's really not much to it. That's probably more than enough. We'll reinstall this here. And that is it for the caliper end. So next step says, Squeeze and release the brake lever. So we'll do that now. Squeeze and release, squeeze and release. Oh, look at that, look how firm that is. 
Step nine, hold the syringe at the lever vertically, firmly pull on the plunger to create a vacuum, then compress the plunger to pressurize the system. Repeat this process several times until only a small amount of bubbles exit the system. So we'll pull up, but this is really where this style of plunger is going to be uh, advantageous. So we can see we're holding a vacuum now, still some bubbles coming out. Press to repressurize the system. Out again. There we go. So that should be a neutral pressure. Back to the instructions. Lightly compress and release the plunger at the lever to equalize the system. That's what you just saw me doing that bouncing. Close the clamp on the syringe at the brake lever. That is this right here. So now we can kind of let this down because we're not worried about air coming up and into the lever body. Remove the syringe at the lever from the bleed port. Clean any dot brake fluid that drips from the bleed port with a shop towel. Then sort of immediately after, install the bleed screw. Use a T10 torch to tighten the bleed screw to 1.6 Newton meters. All right, so go ahead and unthread it. Again, you don't need to rotate the whole system, which I was doing earlier. Catch any drips on the body. This is quite possibly the worst angle to try to do this because I can barely see what I'm doing. There we go. Oh, I love that unscrew action. Very cool. All right, switch back here to our 2.5 millimeter tool and get ready to remove the bleed block from the caliper body. There we go, manually pull it out. Grab our brake pads and that little metal, I think the English clip they're called again. Reinsert the pads. Again, we've already inspected this earlier. Cool, that's it. So I'm going to spare you the uh, drama in uh, me reinstalling the wheel. And I'm just going to finish this review up by saying, I've never done this before in my life. Take this for entertainment purposes only and not instructional, even though I am referencing the SRAM service manual. Don't be afraid to do this on your own. Once more, I recognize the value and importance in kind of those uh, metal uh, fittings on the professional kit. Um, even if I'm not going to use some of the extra bleed blocks and maybe at this point in time have no use for the, uh, the new O-rings and, and sort of service parts there. I think, again, this falls under that buy once, cry once. I think if you're going to spend in Canada, it was the difference between 109 and 149. So for $40, you are getting premium syringes and metal on metal versus plastic on plastic. So if that $40 is a make or break for you, I think that you're still going to be in good hands with the standard kit. It's going to be able to do everything and the bits that really matter that's, you know, threading into the caliper and the lever, that's still metal. It's identical to this professional kit. However, if you're looking for, you know, the ultimate and longevity, or if you're doing more brake services, you know, on, on a more frequent basis, so maybe you have multiple bikes or you're doing it for yourself or your partner or your friends, you know, maybe you're the kind of go-to guy in your group and, you know, you want to make, uh, uh, you know, a couple extra dollars or trade service for parts or tires or whatever you do you, then maybe that professional kit is going to be the way to go because the more you're going to thread uh, things together, inherently plastic on plastic is going to be less durable and those tolerances are going to increase over time compared to metal on metal. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I do greatly, sincerely do appreciate it. Hopefully this was uh, entertaining, useful, maybe even inspiring. It's kind of weird for me to even think about, but, um, but yes, thank you very much. If you clicked on this video and uh, just to learn how to do this, then definitely go over and for everybody else, go over and check out SRAM's tech videos. They are the professionals, but, uh, but maybe consider sticking around and subscribing. 
because there's a whole bunch of other uh, writing content. Again, next week we will be back with, uh, what is it, episode two of the 2023 Crankworks series. And it's just gonna get better after that. Again, thank you very much for watching. Sincerely do appreciate it. You take care and bye for now.